Today we're making gear. I've had a Dutchware gear pack cover sitting on the shelf for a couple months and I'm finally getting around to putting it together and I want to take you along with me. So before we get started let's go over some of the things that we're going to need. I've got the Dutchware gear pack cover kit. This is the 0.9 ounce xenon uh, fabric. It's one yard in the charcoal gray color. We got the elastic cord and hardware we need. We've got some very nice sharp fiscus scissors. This is a the Gutterman Mara 70 thread, also in the charcoal gray. Some really nice universal Smith's needles. Now the ones I'm going to be using for this project are the 8012. And then I'll also need some sort of tape measure to measure out the pack. For a thread injector, I'm using my wife's brother LS1520. Now this is a thread injector because it sounds cooler than saying sewing machine. I don't know. Anyway, so the first thing we're going to need is our pack. And I've got this stuffed with some down sleeping bags just so I can get kind of a, a full size. You want to measure this with everything that you normally would pack or the, the size of pack that you would have if it were packed up. Now when we take these measurements, we want to take a lengthwise measurement and then the widthwise measurement. You're going to start from where you want the pack cover to, to start. And then take it all the way around to where you expect it to end. Now in this case, I've got about 100 centimeters. Uh, I need to add approximately 3 inches to allow for a seam allowance. Now I'm not one to get overly obsessed with measurements. Uh, this is not precision. This is horseshoes and hand grenades. As long as we get it in the right ballpark, we're going to be in good shape. Now I'm using a Sharpie marker for marking. Uh, I don't know that I would advise it because it tends to bleed through. Not so much this xenon material, but if you're using a marker on the uh, the under quilt, the down, the calendared materials, it tends to uh, to bleed through that. All right. So the first thing we want to do is mark our corners. I'm about two inches from the edge. And the reason for this is the first thing we're going to sew, is we're going to roll this over a couple times and sew it. I'm going to use this as my marker so that I'm, eat, I'm the same length on all four corners. Now, this will not be a tutorial on how to sew well, because I'm not very good at it. Uh, I would certainly recommend you take a look at your manufacturer's documentation on how to thread your needle and uh, there's a lot of good tutorials out there on how to do a better job sewing. Uh, I'm just happy not to screw it up most of the time. You know, I have to use tweezers to thread the needle. My wife can just thread it without. Very jealous. Uh, before I get started, I usually make sure that my, my bobbin, this is a front-loading machine, so the bobbin is in the front. Sometimes you have a machine where the bobbin is in the top. You just want to make sure your bobbin is full before you start uh, sewing a long stitch along the edge of one of these projects. 
you don't want to have to stop in the middle and uh, whatnot. So as I mentioned before, our first stitch is going to be to roll this edge down and just run a stitch across it. And then I'm going to use those little two inch markers to kind of give me an idea of, or to let me know that I'm even across all four corners. Now this Xenon is a really slippery fabric. It takes some getting used to. Uh, certainly practice. You know, there, there's no shame in ordering a yard of material and just practicing with it. Now you're going to have to play around with your machine for the right tension and needle placement and things of that nature. Uh, for this particular setup, uh, I don't have the ability to move my needle, and so it is right where it needs to be in the center. Uh, for tension, I am sitting right in the middle. I'm at, I have a, a gauge here, a scale of zero to seven, and I'm sitting at about a four. And then for my stitch length, you really want a longer stitch length with these types of outdoor fabrics, um, I, at least I've heard. Um, I've used the shorter length. It, it's going to work either way. Uh, I'm personally using a longer stitch length. Uh, again, I have kind of a scale here of, you know, 1 to 12. I'm around a, a 10 in terms of the stitch length itself. And so I'm just going to start out on my tail and lock it. You know, something to keep in mind when it comes to make your gear is you can't get into this thinking, oh, I'm going to make my gear and save all this money. You know, money cannot be or shouldn't be your only motivation to making your own gear. Uh, quite frankly, I've probably spent more money trying to make my own gear than I have just buying it outright. You know, Dutch sells these things, these pack covers, for a ridiculously cheap amount, already made. So why do it then? What's the, what's the point? And the reality is, it's a, there's something about going into the field with a piece of gear that you've handcrafted yourself, that you know you made. You know, I don't have the world's fanciest hammock in the world. It's a few yards of blue fabric with channel sewn on the ends. But I love that hammock. That is my favorite hammock. And I couldn't imagine going into the field with any other hammock other than the one that I made. And I think a lot of people feel that way about making their own gear. You know, I didn't learn to sew, well, I didn't start to learn to sew, I still don't know how, to be honest. I didn't start to learn to sew until I was in my 30s, getting into hiking and, and wanting to make my own gear. Man, this is a finicky fabric. You know, I have a lot of respect for people that are able to do this and make very professional looking pieces of equipment. Again, I'm just happy to make something that's functional. How did that turn out? Oh, see, I didn't start that near enough back. Oh well.
you know, the main point of doing videos like this is to show people it doesn't matter what your skill level is. I'm not very good at sewing. You know, I, I just started to learn. But, you know, I can put a stitch in a piece of fabric and get it, uh, get it to work and function the way I want. So can you. You know, there's, there's no reason to be afraid of trying to make your own gear. Corner. So I've started rolling the uh, one of the edges. Now I'm using pins for the first few inches just to get myself started and we'll see if I feel like I can keep going without the pins. Something to keep in mind is this channel is going to have that elastic cord in so you want to make sure you have enough channel there so that you can feed your elastic cord in here and then when you sew this you want to make sure that the your actual sewing along this edge and leaving enough room and then also make sure that you don't sew the end here shut really the hardest part is getting started once you have it started it's not that bad Sew a little, roll a little. I'm just kind of working my way down the uh, little edge here, rolling a hem. This is rolled over twice. Anytime you lift your presser foot, make sure you're putting your needle down. Having my fabric kind of bunch up a little bit. I'll avoid that. Noticing that my hem's not as tight right through here as I want. I'm just kind of fiddling with it, getting it to the point that I like. The other thing I find is to uh, a slow speed, you know, don't try to sew super fast. There's nothing wrong with taking it nice and slow and making sure that you get a good stitch. Now don't confuse a good stitch with a straight stitch because I don't know what a straight stitch is. A good stitch holds two pieces of fabric together. There we go. There you have it, there's the back side. And there's the front. Probably could have rolled that initial corner a little bit more in. But the shock cord's gonna fit in there nicely and that looks pretty good. So I'm going to do this to all of the edges, trimming the excess thread as I go. Should turn out pretty good. All right, so the sewing portion of this exercise is done. Now we're just going to go around, take our elastic cord and feed it into the channels and then on one corner we'll have the two ends coming out we can put a clip on it and this thing will be ready to go and there we have it everything all of the line has been fed through and what I'm left with is just a little bit of extra line that I need to tie a knot in and then we'll be ready to fit this on the pack and see how it looks. Now, some, something to keep in mind, you know, with my other pack cover, I use it as a, a ground sheet as well. So when I get into camp, I lay out the, 
uh, pack cover and I dump my the contents of my pack onto that ground sheet onto the pack cover uh, with this kit the elastic cord wasn't long en or isn't long enough to completely stretch this out as a square and so if you if you do want to use this as a ground tarp as well as a pack cover instead of buying the kit which will have a little bit shorter uh, line in it you might just want to order a yard of your xenon 0.9 fabric and then order enough cordage to stretch this out completely flat so that you get the full you know half yard or so of material that you can use and, and dump gear out onto so now the moment of truth does it actually fit the pack? Oh yeah, look at that. Very nice. There you have it. A custom fitted pack cover, ultralight pack cover. That's going to do great on the trail. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me today while I put together this kit. I'm going to leave a link down below where you can buy similar kits either at DutchWearGear.com or Ripstop by The Roll. Uh, both have similar products. Uh, this is a great way to enter in the Make Your Gear kind of community. Now if you enjoy this type of video, I've got a bunch of stuff on order. I'm hoping to do some more Make Your Gear type videos. Uh, maybe a tarp, uh, some quilts, a top quilt, under quilt, that sort of stuff. So if you like it uh, and want to see more of these types of videos, just let me know. Uh, until next time. Thanks.